Hello everyone, this is Tyler. Today we're going to be talking about the first part of John chapter 1, the resume of Jesus Christ. We have all been there writing a resume in anticipation of it being combed over especially carefully by the hiring committee. We choose each word with care, hoping to stand out among all the other equally qualified candidates. If and when we get to the interview, it is often starts with a tense moment as the interviewers re-examine the resume to see who you are, what qualifications you have, who recommended you, why you should be a good fit for the position, and ultimately why you should be hired. I bet you didn't know that Jesus had a resume. In fact, Jesus' resume is included in John chapter 1. John 1, 1 through 13 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man but of God. First thing, of course, in every resume is the name of the applicant. Jesus is no different here. He starts off with his name, though it doesn't sound quite like Jesus Christ as you recognize. No, he starts off with the name, The Word. Now, The Word was the title that Jesus chose for himself, much like someone might say, Doctor or lawyer, he was saying that his name is the word. What is the word? In Greek, this word was logos, and it would have had a very impactful meaning for both the Jews and the Greeks listening to it. The Greeks who were hearing this would have heard the ultimate wisdom, the ultimate knowledge in the universe. They would have heard him saying that he was the ultimate source of good wisdom and knowledge in this universe. But for the Greek, he would have been distant. He wouldn't have been a personable God. For the Jew, it takes on an even more me greater meaning because not only do you have the ultimate source of good and reason, but you have the very word of God. This would have been a source of ultimate power, ultimate knowledge, wisdom, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-good. It would have been God incarnate, the power that created the universe. When you put these two together, it's a reasonable thing to say that when Christ is saying he is the Logos, he is the Word, that he is talking to both groups and saying, I am the ultimate good. I am the ultimate wisdom. I am the ultimate power. I am God. That's how Jesus starts off his resume, by saying he is the word. One of the next things people typically include in their resume is work experience. This is what Jesus says of his work experience. The word was with God and the word was God. Now that's some pretty lofty previous experience, you know, being God and all. It's a job with a lot of responsibility, a lot of, a lot of creativity, Take a look at Genesis 1, a lot of attention to detail and organization, 
look at the vehicle law, especially the dietary restrictions and keeping track of what you can and can't eat. It's all about organization. A lot of power, of course. Look at Isaiah 40, for instance. This job vastly overqualifies Christ for anything he could be applying for on earth. There's no real comparison that we can make. The closest would be a former president applying for the job of a bag boy at a grocery store. There's nothing wrong with being a bag boy, of course, but a man who has been the most powerful person in the whole known world, applying to be was often someone's first job. You might be a little overqualified in your resume. Likewise, Christ, who has the past experience of, well, God, is way overqualified for anything we could be requesting here on earth. Philippians 2, 6-8 through 8, puts it this way. Who, though, was in the form of God, not count equality with God, a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus chose to be humble and chose to say, hey, yes, I'm overqualified to be a savior, but I still I'm going to do so. I'm still going to come to this earth and humble myself. His resume is looking pretty good so far. He has a pretty powerful name. He has a great previous work experience. Next thing that you would expect is a little job description. A lot of people haven't been God. In fact, I can think of nobody else who's been God. So you need a little description to see exactly what that job entails. That's where the next few parts of the his resume come in. Him was life, and the light is the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Okay, wait. What? In him was life, and the life is the light of men? What does that even mean? I mean, in a resume, why would you ever say something that makes the hiring committee go, what are you talking about? But this is what Jesus was saying when he said that. He is adding to his job description. Not only did he create all things, not only did he was he responsible for ordering them, but he's saying he is the source of the life, the very essence of its beings. In Genesis, it says that the life, the breath of life, entered Adam and Eve when, when God breathed into him. That life is Christ and the Holy Spirit. Colossians 17 simplifies this a little bit. It says, And he is before all things, in him all things hold together. Christ here is saying he holds everything together. He's kind of like the super glue of the universe. And as to the light, Light is often representative of understanding and morally good things. So essentially he's saying he is the source of knowledge, the source of wisdom. He is a teacher of the universe as well. So his job description breaks it down into a few different categories. He is God, but that's broken down into an artist in creation. It's broken down into a doctor as he gives life to everything around. And it's broken down into a teacher, someone who gives light and understanding and wisdom to all of those around him. A resume might then go on to a list of accomplishments. This was also included in the job description, but it's very important to separate it out as well. Light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overcome it. Did you catch that? Jesus is saying he's going into the darkness. He's going into those who don't have the understanding, who don't have the morality that he himself as God has. He's going into this world. The darkness did not overcome it. Have you ever seen a movie or read a book 
where there's a good guy and a bad guy. Light and darkness typically starts off with a scene where the good guy just gets completely destroyed by the darkness and then has to work the tail off to get better and better. Think of the Karate Kid. At the beginning, Karate Kid gets beat up by a bunch of bullies who happen to be part of Cobra Kai. Then he meets his sensei, and after a lot of practice and a lot of waxing on and off, he learns to be the light, essentially. He goes out, and in the end, spoiler alert, he defeats those from Cobra Kai. Jesus, he doesn't have that moment at the beginning where he's beaten up and destroyed. No, Jesus has won every battle from the beginning. He went into the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Christ here, a move that is astonishing, is quoting DJ Khaled, even though it's 2,000 years before the song would come out. And he says, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. This is an inconceivable thing to say in a resume. I've never lost. I All I do is win. But... That's why he chooses this moment to use his reference. John the Baptist is Jesus' reference. John was a very peculiar pick for a reference, at least if you look at him from today. Today, he's looked at as this kind of crazy guy who lives out in the wilderness, and he would probably be wearing a tinfoil hat if tinfoil existed back then. That's what people think of when they think of this man, John the Baptist. But that's missing out on a huge portion of who he was. We'll talk about him more next week. But for this week, we need to look at one scripture. John 3.26 This is a passage where John's disciples are talking to John. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, Look, he is baptizing, and all are going to him. This word rabbi is crucial because it was only given to very select few people in this community. A rabbi was a great teacher who was well respected in the community and a massive teacher and storyteller. The rabbi would have had authority to instruct on the meaning of scripture and would know the entire Old Testament by heart. Not just the words, the meanings as well. And I don't mean he would know, well, somewhere in there there's something about not chewing the cud or something like that, right? No, no, no. He had memorized the entire Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi and everything in between. They were extraordinary men and well-respected. They commanded a great deal of respect in the community. And this, is a man that Christ used as a reference. This rabbi seems like a pretty amazing resume so far, doesn't it? It's just missing one thing. What is it for? What is this resume for? What is the position that he's applying for? And why does it matter? His resume ends with a description of the job he's applying for. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. He came to seek you. He came that you could be saved through him. In an ultimate act of humility, he didn't come to seek a job where he could be more famous and gain more glory. No, he came so that you could join him for eternity. So not only is he overqualified for the job, not only does he have impeccable references, not only does he have a name that is above every name, but he's also coming and saying, I will pay you with the right to become a child of God. He is applying to be your personal savior, to restore right relationships between you and God. His resume speaks for itself. He is creative, powerful, organized, responsible, experienced, 
hardworking, wise. He has an amazing reference and unparalleled work experience. He is humble and loving. He is offering a chance to join him. The decision is yours. Will you receive him and become a child of God? Dear Lord, I just pray that you would work through today. I pray that you would be with us. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to look at the resume of Christ. I pray that we would know who you are and that we would serve you. Lord, I pray that we would read this resume and that we would receive you, that we would become children of you. I love you, Lord, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Hopefully you learned something. Next week we will be talking more about John and more about this reference. Bye. Hello, everyone. This is